Hello, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer, the board game review show that would like to honor the United States Marine Corps. From the halls of Montezuma to the... I can never remember the rest of that. Anyway, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at The Shores of Tripoli from Fort Circle Games. In the shores of Tripoli from Fort Circle Games, two players take on the roles of either the United States or the Barbary Pirates in the Barbary Pirates Wars of the Thomas Jefferson's presidency during the first decade of the 19th century. The map is the coast of North Africa. You've got various uh, ports and you have Tripoli being the home of the Barbary Pirates. They also have a few other harbors. Uh, you also have Alexandria, Malta, and uh, Gibraltar representing kind of American bases there. And you also have uh, around Algiers, Morocco, and Tunis various places that are allied to the Barbary Pirates. Now you have kind of holding pools for ships and gunboats and frigates for the various powers as well as armies represented by cubes. And you have a uh, year track and a season track. Four seasons in a round, each year is a round. You also have various American frigates on those uh, years representing the years that they can come online. Now each player has their own deck of cards and they begin the game with kind of three cards out in front of them which are kind of, you know, one-time special uh, cards, event cards that they can use whenever they want. But every round you're going to draw six cards and you've got a hand of six cards. Now some cards are one-offs, you play for the event, they're out of the game for the rest of the game. Some cards have battle conditions on them so that during a battle you play them and they may give you a specific advantage or maybe hurt the other side in some way or you can discard them for other benefits. For instance, the Barbary Pirate, he can discard them in order to put more uh, Corsairs uh, into his harbor. He can also discard a card to go on a pirate raid, more on that later. Now the American has his own unique event cards as well. He can discard a card if he wants to move up to two of his frigates around the board. He can also discard a card to build a gunboat at Malta. Now, what the American player is going to try to do is put his frigates around Tripletania, uh, Tripoli. And what he wants to do is uh, kind of interdict and intercept some of his Corsairs actually going out to go on pirate raids. Because when a, uh, one of the Barbary pirates plays a card to go on a raid, um, he's going to try to steal gold. Essentially, he's going to roll a number of dice, depending on how many Corsairs he has, one per Corsair. And for every five or six he rolls, he gets a gold piece. Now, there are 12 gold pieces, and he's going to get a gold piece for every five or six he rolls. Now, Americans have their frigates there. Now, each frigate can roll two die. He can also put a, one of his gunboats there, it would just roll one die. But for every die roll of six, he can sink one of those Corsairs. Now, various times during the play, the Barbary Pirates player is going to add more armies, uh, more cubes to his ports like Benghazi and Dern. If the American player uh, has a uh, ship in Alexandria and he's got the card, he can play it to create Hammett's army. Hammett's army is an Arab army that the Americans are supporting. Then they can also put American uh, Marines there as well to support them. And they can try to invade and take over some of those territories that the Barbary Pirates control, Benghazi and Dern. And you can try to use those as stepping stones to get to Tripoli. However, if Hammett's army is defeated, then the Americans are defeated. Now, at various times, the uh, Barbary Pirates player, he can try to attack navally, the American player to whittle down his ships. 
Um, you can have the Americans trying to bombard uh, those ports of Benghazi and Dern, trying to get rid of some of those armies before they invade. So there's a lot of uh, you know other little things and strategies that can go on. Uh, some cards might come up that activate you know Algiers, and suddenly there's Algerian pirates, and they too are going to take part in raids. They, they can take part in raids uh, to try to get gold as well. Now there's two ways the American player can win. The American player can either invade uh, Tripoli successfully and take it over, in which case they've destroyed the Barbary pirates, or they can, can create conditions that are favorable enough on them on the board so that they can play their peace treaty card. If they can play that card under the right conditions, then the Americans win the game. The Barbary Pirates player can win in one of three ways. If ever they are successful in defeating Hammett's army, meaning the Americans invade and they are successfully repulsed, then the, they win the game immediately. They also win the game if they succeed in sinking four American frigates, they win the game. And then finally, if they ever get 12 gold, all 12 of those gold pieces, the cost comes too high for the Americans to continue to resist, and then once again, the Tripletanian player wins the game. So, uh... Shores of Tripoli. I gotta tell you, uh, I love games that teach you history and do it well, and this one does. Uh, as you know, I'm a, I'm a historian myself, but this is not an era I'm overly familiar with, not a conflict I'm overly familiar with. And it's kind of neat to, to, to learn stuff when you're playing a game. That's something I always enjoy. Um, the game is, of course, a card-driven game, and it's a fairly quick card-driven game. And really the key is, of course, you want to get good cards, but how to, to play those cards, you know, because sometimes you want to you wanna go ahead and, and, and play a card for an event, but you need to get another Corsair there, so you got to choose, well, which, which card do I want to sacrifice, or I need to move my, my, my ships, which card do I want to sacrifice? So there's, there's a lot of that sweating and, 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 you know, tough decisions there. There's also some other timing questions, like, you know, for the Americans, when do you really want to bring Hammett's army I I into it, and when do you want to attack with it? Um, there, you know, there's questions about, you know, when do I want to activate the uh, Swedish Navy, knowing that sooner or later uh, he can go ahead and, you know, the, the, the Triple Taney player can go ahead and take out the Swedes. Um, there, there's all sorts of, of good questions here, especially after you know the cards fairly well. There's, there's a lot of good gameplay, and you're trying to, to, to guess, and there's a little bit of bluff and double bluff, which I like. Um, but also, too, one of the things I love is you've got you've got four seasons, but you get six cards. So what that means is at the end of a round, you, you draw six more cards, but then you discard down to eight cards. So you're always or often uh, have, to, have to get rid of cards. And again, this can be a very painful decision because, you know, should I, should I keep some cards I don't really need because I'm going to have to discard cards anyway? Or do I want to keep everything for their event and then I'm going to sweat, well, what, which events do I want to play or which, which do I want to hold in case there's a battle? So there's some really good decisions there as well. Um, so this has got, I, first of all, I think it's a great theme, and it's not one that I think has been done before. Maybe it has, but I, I haven't seen it. So it, I really like the theme here, and it's done in, in a very interesting and, and really competitive way. The game this most reminds me of is Twilight Struggle. And it reminds me of Twilight Struggle because of that card play, because you're, you're trying to make the best you can of the hand you've got. Now, in Twilight Struggle, of course, very oftentimes you're shooting yourself in the foot uh, in order to do something, and you, and you don't have any choice there. But here, it's it's not quite as 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 draconian, but it is mean. The cards you play can be very mean, and I really like that. And I'll tell you right now, one of the things I like is this is a really quick game. I, I don't think I played a game that's been more than an hour, um, and I like that. If this were like a three-hour game, I think it would wear out its welcome. Uh, I don't think there'd be enough meat to it. But the way it is, the way it's so quick and the way it's so fast, this is a fantastic game. This is really a good game. This is another game that I'm looking at as a possible contender for Game of the Year. I really, really enjoyed Shores of Tripoli. Um, you know, I, I, I remember reading about it, and I, and I talked with the designer a little bit, and I thought it looked like a good game, and I was expecting to, to like it, but I didn't think I would like it as much as I did like it, and I do like this game a lot. So congratulations uh, this to, uh, to uh, Ford Circle Games for just putting out a fantastic game. Can't wait to see what you come up with next, and uh, recommendation for the Discriminating Gamer for Shores of Tripoli, 110%. You're going to want to buy this one. Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on Game Geek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, have you ever heard the story about the soldier who finds a scorpion in his tent? Now, in the Marines, 
they kill the scorpion. In the Army, they inform their CO of the presence of a scorpion in their tent. And in the Air Force, they call the front desk and ask what a tent is doing in their room. I like the Air Force, too. It was just a joke. Please somebody help me on my feet again And I don't know where I'm going And I don't know where I've been Please somebody help me on the solid ground It's a long time and I'll be dying Once a year I wind up in the band yeah! Yeah! You're definitely moving on to the next round.